Good morning. It's I think about 20 past five. I've been up since about two o'clock. I crashed out last night. I have no idea what time, probably half eight, nine o'clock. I'm sure Selena will remember. And then woke up at 2 a.m. I think I slept for another half an hour. Now it's just after five. What I've decided to do is come down to the apartment gym. Apparently it's open from 5 a.m. So I'm going to come down now, get a good workout in. Today's meant to be 33 degrees Celsius. Don't know what that is in American, but it's hot enough to go to the beach. And everybody says you have to really utilize the hot days here because it can vary 20, 25 degrees day to day. And I think the following day it's only 22 degrees. So we're going to go to the beach today. Um, but after I've done my workout, hopefully Celine will be up and we can find a nice place to go to breakfast. This apartment complex is amazing. I'm really, really enjoying it. Seems to have everything you need on site. The apartment's big enough. It's probably, I don't want to say 700 and something square foot, maybe a little bit more. Waterfront, we sat out last night. Um, and the way they've maintained the whole building is pretty special. I like their use of shapes, colors, wood. Hopefully the gym is going to be as good as I want it to be. What I saw online looked great. It's one of the better apartment stroke hotel gyms. So I'm hoping it's got everything that I need in there. I'm not going to lift too heavy because I'm super tired. It's really weird getting used to. We left on a Thursday evening. I think we got picked up at 4 p.m. on Thursday and we landed here about 9 a.m. on Saturday. So we completely missed Friday, which is still hard for me to get over. And because we we're forward in time, I think 19 hours, it's really hard getting used to that. In some ways, I don't think the jet lag is going to be quite as bad because effectively, we're not that far off in terms of hours. We've just missed the day, but we'll soon find out whether that's true. Made it to the gym. Nobody's in here. Probably because it's 5.20 on a Sunday morning. It's pretty well equipped. It's got dumbbells up to 30 kilos, which is great. Depper, cable machine, functional training, rowers, ah, and leg machines, which is what I need today. Apparently there's a cinema and game room here, which I'll briefly have a look at. I don't know if we'll use that, but I guess for the people that live here, apparently it's probably good, the community area. Oh, and a yoga studio. Finished up my workout. I think I did about an hour and 10 minutes, nice and relaxed. So then it was up by the time I got home. How are you feeling? Refreshed. You're feeling refreshed? Refreshed and ready to start the day. That's good. She slept a lot on the plane and then got a good sleep last night. Yeah, I kept waking up at four. I think the first time I woke up was around 4 a.m. That's it, yeah. Quite a bit after me then. But um, looking forward to it today. So we're going to take a walk. A lot of the, this Sunday morning, a lot of the places don't open till 7.30 or 8 o'clock. It's, what's the time now? Just gone seven? Just gone seven. So we're going to take a 20 minute walk to, what's the place called? Stock room, high stock seven. The great thing here is everything is walkable and if you can't bother to walk, there's a tram stop. What would you say, 20 meters from our door? Oh, Not yeah, even 20 meters. Outside, yes. And it seems like they stop absolutely everywhere. The one downside is we've never lived in a place with a tram, so I forget to look out for the trams. <laughs> yeah. So I remember for the cars, but yesterday I nearly walked out in front of the tram, so that's the one downside. We are nearly at our destination now. It's a super easy walk. It's a very, very nice city. Relatively clean for a city and really not many homeless unless we've just not been in the right yeah. area. It's quite <laughs> shocking. We just may, maybe, I'm not sure that 100% they were homeless. There's maybe one person. I don't think I've seen any. Yeah, maybe Australia have cracked the code. Who knows? <laughs> maybe. Probably in the room. Oh, they're area. somewhere. Yeah. Put them so Selena decided to take us to a closed restaurant. So we're not going to that one now. Where are we going now? Uh, Cherry and Twig, which we've double checked, is actually open. You always have to check somebody's work. I think it's only a two. What is it? How long did you say? Four minutes? I don't think it's even four minutes. It says 0 0.1 miles. Yeah, it's just round. Uh, we actually walk very slowly. But because it's a the city, there's going to be tens of yeah, places that are available. Oh. Oh. 
we just had breakfast at a place called Cherry and Twig after I messed up this morning and took us to a breakfast place that was not open but we had a very nice breakfast. Now we are planning to go to Port Melbourne Beach and they have a really good tram system here and in the CBD area you do not need to pay for the tram it's completely free but if you go out of the CBD area you do need to pay and we're trying to work out how to get this and we don't even know how to pronounce it Mikey or Mickey uh, this card that you need to use to get onto the tram for Mickey coffee is six yeah that makes sense but we can't you do two in one go I'm guessing not okay we'll yeah, do one yeah. bye bye credit card I think we have success now <laughs> so we went for the top up one but so you have to pay six dollars for the actual card itself and we have it now and then we've topped it up with 10 no, and I say this for the American viewers Australia everything we're talking about in dollars is Australian <laughs> yeah. dollars not US other dollars, dollars do exist <laughs> have just made it to Port Melbourne and we're at Station Pier. It was pretty easy to get here. The tram was literally right outside the apartment building. It was one, I don't know, less than five minutes, I would say, into the CBD area. Like we said before, if you're in the CBD district, you do not need to be tapping your Mikey card and it is pronounced Mikey. Then we got onto another tram 109 to Port Melbourne which was very very easy and now we're just going to explore explore the pier and then I think walk down to the beach and see where the day takes us. The first thing that we realised when we got to Port Melbourne and where we got off at the tram was there's a place called Station Pier which we assumed meant there's a pier in which you can walk along for pedestrians. You can't do that. It looks like a pier for a cruise ship, from what I can tell. And oh, that's no, definitely. Yeah, the cruise ship's there. <laughs> and now I can see it. Across the two weeks in Melbourne, we don't, well, in Australia, we don't have any real set plans other than for me where I've got work, which is really nice because the whole idea of coming to Australia was really to experience what it could be like living and working here. We've got just over a week in Melbourne living in that apartment. The reason we've come to Port Melbourne Beach today was really on the recommendation of an airline stewardess on the way here. She gave and, as usual, and makes friends. And I think he spent a lot of time talking to the air stewardesses. And she gave him lots of tips on restaurants and places to go in Melbourne. One of the things that many people have said to us about Melbourne in particular is that the weather, it can be unpredictable as in you can get really nice sunny days and then the next day it can be really cold and chilly and rainy. Today is supposed to be really nice, it is really nice so take advantage of that and go to the beach and one of the beaches she recommended was Port Melbourne. One of the things that's really surprised us, especially I think in my head Melbourne is a major city and for, with most major cities that we've been used to it's always really busy and it's the weekend the weather's nice so in my head everywhere is going to be really busy in terms of cars getting parking would be really difficult I imagine the beaches to be full I know in England when you get nice days it's all really packed but Melbourne as a city is really not busy at all and what was interesting is when we arrived yesterday we were told that there was a pink concert going on and that loads of people are in town for the concert but you for us it was really empty so yeah huge difference in terms of other cities that we see as very popular in terms of the density walked along the beachfront and made it to a pier that you can walk on I would say it looks it's a very chill area uh, there's lots of families out lots of people out with their dogs 
Melbourne in general is very dog friendly and there's a whole section of the beach at the moment where there looks like there's loads of kids learning to kayak or they're playing games or doing some sort of sporting activity in the sea. I think both me and Anne have been saying that people generally seem very into their fitness here. So we've seen loads of people either out cycling, going for long walks or just running. So a lot of runners out. I think we've been here for 24 hours, a little over 24 hours so far. And my initial impression of Melbourne is it is a really nice city to be in. Uh, so far, the things that stand out to me in terms of what I like, the food's been great. The coffee is as amazing as everyone recommends. I don't think we've had a bad cappuccino, flat white espresso since being here in the first 24 hours. Bread here is also amazing. For those of you that have been watching the channel will know that we do not like the quality of bread in the USA. Much better here. And for a city, I really like it. I like it because it isn't that busy. It's one of the things we like about Vegas, that it's not really that congested. And you do get that really nice blend of city, but also the beach. Pretty much what we've said about San Diego, if we had to pick somewhere else in the US, we believe San Diego would be that place. And it seems that Melbourne is that place here in Australia. Now, that's one city that we've been to so far. So we just finished up at the beach and I think maybe a seven minute tram journey yeah. back to, what's the name of this road? Flanders, Flanders. Flinders. Flinders, <laughs> close. Uh, we've come to Flinders Street. And it's right by the river, The I think this is the Yarra River. Yeah, it's near, where are we near? The Double Tree yeah. by Hilton. But what's strange for me about Melbourne at least is it's kind of a mix of so many things condensed into a small city. Yeah. There's parts of it that are like New York or Canary Wharf in yeah, terms of the glass buildings. Like Wharf, then it yeah. has it's actually you know what it's like? It's like London, which makes sense because that's London where it's from. if it's it got had old a beach buildings. Night nearby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have the river bank. Yeah, the that's Thames, true, that's true. But it's got buildings that look like they've been here for hundreds of years. I don't know whether they have, but they look like that. And then buildings that look like they were built five years ago. Super modern, plus the old, and their train station. And then they've got the similar. high rises as well. Yeah. So yeah, just a, a mix. Yeah, it's, it's definitely more visually interesting than most US yeah. places. But still not as busy anywhere near. It's a Sunday. It's on... a sunny Sunday and you can get everywhere you want you can get into packed. places it's really strange oh one thing we did notice when we went out this morning to eat breakfast they have a standard charge so let's say a sandwich costs 15 oh, yeah. but at the bottom of the bill or the bottom of the menu says a 10 percent surcharge on the weekend yeah. so there's just an automatic upcharge however it is nice not having to tip remember yeah tip. that that's oh yeah we haven't had to tip here yeah. which is really odd yeah but also really weird, nice that, and really easy but we're heading now towards a bar that Selena's picked. Who knows? It may or may not be open. <laughs> it may. Let's go check it out. Oh, okay. Finished at the rooftop bar and literally walked less than, I don't know, three minutes from the rooftop bar to Hosier Lane and this is a lane that's famous for all of its graffiti artwork. When they say there's graffiti artwork here, there is a lot, the whole stretch is just packed full of various types of graffiti, names, writings, art in terms of the pictures, some very realistic artwork as well of faces and um, it's pretty cool and but it's very very stinky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And there's restaurants and bars from what I can tell along this strip as well. And this area in general, most of the restaurants and bars that we were recommended were all around here. So this seems to be the place to come to in the CBD area. The prices are really nowhere near as bad as you would expect, considering you are in the central area. I think a cocktail and a beer cost 20 US dollars. So I can't remember what it was because I just wait for it to come from my Amex thing. It pops up <laughs> all the time. And 
I would expect. Maybe if we were out on the strip, thirty dollars, maybe yeah, a bit more yeah. for two drinks like that. So it's a bit cheaper, but not... yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's really not as bad as you would expect because all cities are expensive, aren't they? Yeah. The ones that we go to. If you go yeah. to New York or LA or London, it's really expensive. We used to go out on night in London, yeah. and remember, they we had all the free drinks, and we'd have to ask if they mischarged <laughs> us. But it would be. Oh, where's ridiculous. the extra drink that we must be getting? <laughs> yeah. So it's actually very, very reasonably priced, even in the city centre. We had to go home and have uh, quite a long nap. How long did we sleep for? Yeah, probably a couple of hours. It's hard. It's tough trying to keep up with this jet lag. So we had a couple of hours nap and now we're heading back into town to go out to eat. I think both are Asian restaurants. Pretty much here it seems quite similar to Vegas in that it's dominated by Asian food, would you say? Probably more so, do you think? It, it does make more sense, they are a lot closer to here, but they have so much good Asian food, which happens to be our favorite cuisine. So we're gonna try out one of two places, I think, when we get there. But if we don't like them, there's lots of food places near there. I think it's a, how many minutes on this tram? 10 minutes on the tram, and then 10 minute walk, Selena assures me. How has day one been for you, sir? I've enjoyed it. I enjoyed going to the beach, just roaming around in general and just seeing the blend of what Melbourne has to offer. And it's a bit of a surprise in the sense of that mix of that city, being close to the beach, not being too busy. Um, and then the food, the food's been good so far, so I can't complain about that. Either. Definitely one of the easiest cities to get around. They yeah. seem to have solved all of the transportation problems all round. So allow people to have electric vehicles. You see people on one wheelers, scooters, bicycles, which for some reason you're not allowed. See this one? You're not allowed in the UK. Build trams and everything seems to work absolutely yeah, fine. The tram system is great. Really, really easy, efficient. I'm guessing maybe in the weekday when people are commuting is that it's busiest maybe yeah i would assume so we're, we're gonna find out tomorrow because we'll be out but yeah for me it's been fun it's tough getting over the jet, jet lag <laughs> so hopefully in a couple of days we'll be over that but we're gonna go enjoy our food now and then we'll see you tomorrow probably about 4 a.m <laughs>